Back in phone show 362 in the spring, I covered this, the Motorola G7 Plus, with a truckload of flagship-esque features, including a stabilised camera, stereo speakers with Dolby Atmos and glass sandwich design, all for way less than £300. It was a pretty decent package and I recommended it to quite a few people, not least in my Christmas top five phones feature. But in that top five, I also tease the imminent arrival of the G8 Plus. And that too is here now. It's not a true successor in that Motorola has rethought the pricing, which has gone down unusually in this current age and by quite a bit, starting at 240 and now at 200 pounds already at, for example, Carphone Warehouse. Other retailers are available with the main cost savings being the materials used and that the back is now plastic and not glass. And this matters not a jot since a TPU case is supplied in the box in which case you can't tell whether it's a glass or a plastic back. The other small saving is the charging standard supported. Quick Charge 3 is now gone, replaced by bog standard 3 amp, i.e. 15 watt charging, which is eminently good enough, especially for the target market. But it's not just Normobs who should buy the G8 Plus, I think. The phone makes a great backup or play device for phone enthusiasts too. The stereo speakers are better than the G7 Plus. Here they're true stereo and there's decent oomph coming from the earpiece end. Here's a demo, full volume. <laughs> it's pretty decent. Helped by Dolby Atmos. There's some top end, there's some bass. And full stereo, yes. Gotta love Mr. Joe Bonamassa. The battery's a gem at 4,000 milliamp hours, and you're talking of at least a day and a half on a charge in normal use. Inside, the chipset's been upgraded to a Snapdragon 665, and it's noticeably nippier. RAM is the same at 4 gigabyte, adequate for the chipset and 1080p display. Storage is the same to 64 gig plus micro SD expansion. The G8 Plus IPS LCD display has a few extra pixels compared to the G7 Plus, plus a small up notch, and it's brighter and whiter. So what comes across is that aside from the plastic, it is actually a bit of an upgrade from the G7 Plus, yet at a lower launch price, which is impressive. Where things differ most is in imaging with a totally different camera setup on the G8 Plus here. A 48 megapixel f over 1.7 two inch sensor is the one two along here in the row is impressive at this price point, of course, especially with laser autofocus. As with other implementations of this Sony sensor, you can forget zoom, at least if you care about image purity. But the quad bayer system allied to restrained Motorola processing does lead to some incredibly clear and pure results. Certainly at one by one, I unzoomed see the samples here, even in low light. There's a night vision mode, but results here were very artificial and blocky. Just stick to the natural processing. Oddly, there's a separate video sensor. That's the one on the end here. Here's a demo. So here we're shooting in action cam mode, which means you hold the phone in portrait and you get to electronic stabilization and a very wide angle video frame. You can do all sorts of exciting things in terms of uh, hiking and getting around and uh, skateboarding, all the sort of stuff that I'm too old for. However, if you then turn the phone into landscape, you get a portrait video, which seems completely unintuitive. I, I guess no one will do this, but uh, the whole action cam idea is a good one. And you can turn this behavior off and just go back to regular videography if you want. So back to action cam mode, it's landscape and I'm jogging and I'm moving around and it's staying pretty darn stable on the screen and quite a wide angle field of view. This will be great and a lot of fun. You'll be familiar with Motorola's app loadout by now. It's very light with just moto actions sprinkled across the top. So chop chop for the torch, double twist for the camera and so on. As with the G7 Plus, ambient display has notifications pop on screen as they come in and waving your hand over the front brings these back to view. Software updates will come in monthly or quarterly at Motorola's whim, it seems, but they do come in eventually. I'm sure this will get Android 10, though I haven't seen a date yet. In the meantime, Motorola's one button nav works superbly. I'd have been happy if this had ended up as the Android 10 staple, to be honest. 
Overall, there's a huge amount to like on the Moto G8 Plus and almost nothing to complain about. If you can live with LCD screens, and most people can, then why the heck is anyone paying Samsung or Google a thousand pound when, to use my oft-used cliche, you get 95% the same features at one-fifth the price? Moto's G series has always been my first recommendation to people not wanting to spend a fortune or shopping for a reliable device for a teenager, perhaps. And the G8 Plus is the Rolls-Royce model in that category. You really can't go wrong with this. I loved it to bits.